Alrighty, old goats. Uh, so I put this Yoast vise in a few months ago, and of course, you know, some of the comments were like, "Yo, you don't mount it right there, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Okay, but from my applications, this is where I wanted it." So to me, it doesn't really matter what someone else would have done. Uh, it's about what I want and what would work for me. And one of the projects I had in mind was sharpening my old, old saw. So, I'm just going to put that saw in here, and uh, I don't really care which way it's going right now, because uh, I'm just go ahead and tighten this down. Now look, I am sitting here comfortably, and the saw is right there. Not, not hard. So, whatever. I, you know, don't let someone tell you you're doing something wrong if you're not. Or if you're doing it, you don't have to do something exactly the way that a pro would do it or a professional would do it. As long as you're doing it in a way that is safe and produces a good enough result to get the job done. That's what matters. I mean, I don't care that someone was like, oh, you can't do it that way. It's, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing to do. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not your desk. It's not your... Not your situation to tell me I'm doing it wrong. So we're going to take this tap taper file and we're just going to, you know, put it in between the saw blades here. And I think I think we're doing every other blade. Oops, that was too long. And if we just follow what the uh, the grooves on the blade as it is. Then you really can't go wrong. I mean, the saw will tell you if you just look at it. Look at, look at the teeth and see which direction the teeth are going. The saw will tell you which way to file it, which way to sharpen it. That's why it's triangular or more of a pyramid. But you put it down in there and you let it tell you. Where it goes. And then you just let it follow through. Now I should move this forward and tighten it down because it is bouncing around a little bit. And you don't want it to bounce around too much because that's going to. I should be wearing gloves on this hand to prevent from scraping here and getting cut. These go side to side, you know, one's on one side, the other's on the other side. So they're kind of, you know, one's pointed that way, one's pointed this way. That's why I'm only doing every other one, so that way I can get the ones that are going the right direction first. And I'm only trying to do about two to three strokes on each one, just enough to get it sharp. And if you just follow the groove on the piece, it'll... That's all you're doing. I mean, you're putting this right here in between the teeth, and you're saying, like, okay, where is it sitting comfortably at, and where, what angle is it already cut to, and already jabbed to, or already sharpened to, or previously sharpened to? So you just put it down in there, and you're like, okay, look, right there, that's where it's, that's where it wants to be. That's where it was sharpened before. That's where I'm sharpening it now. getting down here again I'm starting to give some flex but I don't plan on using the back part of this to sharpen much I don't want to cut the whole tree off or spend 10 hours pruning the tree I just want to, a couple branches I want to remove so I'm not overly worried with getting perfect Because I can always come back later and retouch it up, uh, which I'm going to have to do anyway because it's going to get dull. So, why get it perfect when my intent right now is just to get a few tree branches done? 
basically how you sharpen a blade. So we're gonna cut here. I'm gonna finish sharpening this, and then I'm gonna go cut a couple tree limbs down. Quick and easy, guys. It's it's not hard. And if you screw up, guess what? You do it again. Practice. First thing you can do is mess up and it won't cut right. So what? It'll still cut. It's going to cut better than it being dull. And if you screw it up bad enough that it don't cut at all, you can go buy yourself a new saw. Or sit here and file it more and learn what you're doing. And get it right. It's not hard. Now guys, when your blade's sharp, it should be fairly simple. I mean, you should see some metalish looking edges, some nice shiny edges. Now you could get the angle all wrong and you could get it all messed up, but as long as you're somewhat in the vicinity of where it should be, and if, if you follow where the teeth are, and you just put the tool in between the teeth and let it guide you, you shouldn't have that much of a problem. I mean, you can see that's fairly sharp. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. It just has to be sharp enough to cut a few tree branches down. I didn't spend more than maybe 10, 15 minutes on this. I could have spent longer and got it sharp and got it perfect and got it right. But I only need it for a couple branches, guys. So all I gotta do is follow the damn gun teeth, let the teeth tell me where to sharpen, let me, the teeth tell me the angle, and it'll be good enough to get what I need to do today. Which is just a couple branches. <laughs> Bye. Well, as you should be able to see, a nice sharp blade makes it easy to cut. Um, you know, I'm holding on to the ladder or a tree branch with one arm and sawing with the other arm. Not putting any weight on it other than, you know, the weight of my arm whenever I'm getting tired. But I'm not pushing down on it or anything. I'm just back and forth the way you're supposed to saw. Let the tool do the work. I need to push down and you know, right? more work than it has to be. You just glide it back and forth, it'll cut. And it's sharp enough. It cut through the two branches that I recorded. It cut through about five or six other ones. And I only spent 10 minutes sharpening it and really didn't even pay much attention to what I was doing for sharpening other than letting the, the teeth line my tool up, my file up, to sharpen it for me. Do it like the old guys used to do it. And just let the, let the tool guide you. You know, the saw was sharpened at one point, so it's already got the gangles in there. It's just dull and rusted. Well, not really, I mean, a little small, 
itty bitty coat of rust, but not like rusted through. Uh, so it's just a matter of lining the file up, let the file sit there, and letting the teeth line the file up to where it needs to be. File, run the file across it a couple of times and let it be. And then you use your saw and you just let it cut. You let it do the work, what it's supposed to do. And if you screw up, that's just a learning opportunity. If you screw up and get it filed down wrong and everything's not working right and it doesn't want to cut with the crap, well, you'll, maybe you'll learn from it. It's not rocket science. People have been doing it for hundreds of years without all this fancy stuff and without being told that it has to be this exact degree of an angle. Look, it can be off a little bit. It's still going to cut. Maybe not so easy, but it's still going to cut. And hopefully you can see from that video there that that cut pretty easy. Like a, like a knife through butter. Just back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, and let the weight of the saw cut. Let the teeth pull it down. Let the teeth do their job and cut. Maybe I thought you something, maybe I didn't. Now you can watch the other guys and get all the techno babble and find out the precise angle at which you should be sharpening them at, but unless you buy some sort of tool, you're never gonna get that precise angle. Our ancestors didn't do it that way. My grandfather didn't do it that way. His dad didn't do it that way. His father didn't do it that way. People have survived for hundreds of years without being precise. They eyeball it, they play with it. If it cuts good, it's good. If it cuts bad, it's not good. Bye.